Hey everybody, welcome back for another week of Celebrate Wonder, week 35. And this week we are learning more about how believers can share. Can we share our gifts and talents we've been learning about? We could share the word about Jesus. We could share some of the stories we've learned in the Bible. We can share love right? There's a lot that we believers can share. So let's get started. Hello, friends. I'm Samuel. Let's wonder about this Bible story together. Imagine a world where everyone has everything they need. A place where every single person is ready to share what they have and no one has to struggle for anything. Wow, what a beautiful and peaceful world. Honestly, it's really hard for me to imagine this. There are so many people who don't have everything they need. Our story today describes a world of hope where everyone is sharing so that everyone has what they need. This is a beautiful vision of what a community of God can look like. Now this might seem impossible. How can we do this? This Bible story gives us an example of something to work towards. And though the world won't be perfect, we can definitely see the world get better. My favorite part is that we can all do something to see it get better. We can all share different things. When we pay attention to the needs around us, we notice ways that we can help. Even if we can't help, maybe we can find someone who can. Even sharing your idea for how to help makes a big difference. Last year, one of my friends noticed that during the summer, some of her friends didn't have lunch. One day, she asked her friends why, and they said they always got lunch from school, and there's no school during the summer. At first, my friend would split her lunch, then she realized that there was a lot of kids who needed lunch. She talked to her mom to see if they could figure out a way to get lunch for everyone. Her mom talked to the school and they came up with a plan. During summer, they would still serve lunch at the school. Even though my friend couldn't do everything on her own, she shared her idea and helped fix a problem. Imagine how your community can be the beautiful vision in the Bible story where everyone has what they need. Paying attention to what's around you is a great place to start. And remember, sharing builds relationship. Think about your community, the people around you, and the ways that you can share. Now it's time for you to wonder.
can even see them in the dark So we wait, we have made Soon the laughter will break out Through every Grab the Celebrate Wonder Bible Storybook and turn to the back, the book of Acts, Acts 4, 32 through 37. It's called Believer's Share. If you need help finding it, it's on page 272 and 273. There were many people who believed in Jesus. They became a community. They shared everything they had with one another. No one said, this is mine. The community of believers took care of one another. People shared their money with the community. The money was used to care for everyone, so no one was in need. The believers continued to teach about Jesus and shared God's love with others. I wonder, what can you share with your community? Hi everybody, it's Miss Nicole. You just heard me read the Bible reading for the week from the book of Acts. And we're talking about, about a community of sharers a community of God's community of Christians who work together, who shared money, who shared homes, who shared their food. And so we're talking a lot about sharing. How can you share in your community? What could you do? And it could be a small thing or it could be even an idea as we saw in the video. And um, I have some props here, but I just wanted to say that if you're in my classroom, you know sharing is big. And we really, really, really have worked hard at sharing. And there's been many days in the past where sharing didn't go so well because we're still learning those skills when we're three years old and four years old and five years old. Um, by the time you are older than kindergarten, you get to be better sharers. But that doesn't mean sharing is still not difficult. It can be very hard. Sometimes I have to share the TV or I have to share 
an office or a phone or a computer. Sometimes um, it's difficult sharing a room, say in college or like the patients where I work. Some of them have a really hard time sharing a room and thinking about others. So um, I have a few props here of things that we can do. We can share some favorite snacks or food. We can also share in a meal or help like in the soup kitchen and um, share food with others who may need food. We could share our money. We can donate money to places or people that need money more than we do. We can offer to buy someone something or like through the drive-thru, buy them um, the person behind you, even a complete stranger, um, something. And it really, really makes a difference and it really makes people feel special and it really shows love. One of the words in this story that we're talking about and in the video is hope. And I know when there's a lot of sharing going on in a community and di different people and even strangers that maybe they also are Christians or believers um, doing the right thing, that it gives me hope. So maybe it's been a bad day or you hear something bad on the news or things have just been tough. And then these little things happen and it gives you hope. Another thing you can do is share time. You can share your time with someone. And sometimes that's the best gift you can give. You can share um, by talking to someone who's lonely or visiting someone who's lonely. And I know with COVID that's hard, but hopefully soon we can do more of that. Um, I know I saw someone the other day and where I work and they thanked me for taking the time to talk to them and just sharing in a conversation because they're very lonely and they haven't had many people to talk to. So there's lots of things that you can do and people that you can help even just by giving them time. Maybe you help somebody clean up their yard, a neighbor and just share your time with them and your skills. So there's lots of things you can do. For this week's project, you're going to punch out the two circles. And um, one is like, oops, one is like um, three pieces or like a Pac-Man from the old days that your parents might know about um, from a video game a long time ago. But anyways, um, this is the top piece and it says, believers share. Okay, and then the bottom one has four pictures and I want you to look at the pictures and see what's going on in the pictures. Now it calls for a special thing called the brass fastener, but I don't have any of those in my house. And so I took a tack, which I need to finish putting together, but I took a tack and put it in the middle of mine and um, I, folded it back, have an adult help you if you have a tack in your house. Um, I folded it over um, with a pair of pliers and then I was going to put a piece of tape on the back so that it won't be so sharp. And then it will move if you're careful and slow. It will move <laughs> just like that. Falls apart. But you get the idea. So you could find something in your house and be creative um, to come up with how to make this work or work, or maybe you have a fastener in your house that can make your dial. And then we'll share about the dial on the Sunday Zoom. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We've got an interesting story today. You know how, as you've grown up, you've grown up 
you've been asked and told and reminded to share, to share, to share. How's that working out? Are we getting pretty good at that, you think? I hope so, because this story is really about sharing. The disciples, who we'll now start calling apostles, and I'll tell you why, disciples were followers and students of Jesus. They followed him around, they learned from him, they were called his disciples, kind of like an apprentice. But Jesus has gone to heaven now, and they are carrying on a big job of telling others. They are now apostles, is what I would call them, and the Bible calls them as well. So the apostles come together and they decide that with the help of the Holy Spirit telling them this is what you'll do to share everything they have. This is not just a toy now and then or a seat at the picnic bench or something like that. Everything they have, they are going to share. All the food and the clothing and whatever anybody needs so that nobody in this group, and it's like 75 or 100 people by now, will be without. That's amazing. And then, to carry it further, if there's some big need, something special that a family needs, someone may sell some of their land or, or who knows what they have, an animal or two, and give that money to the apostles to <clears throat> help meet the need of the family that has a a little bit bigger problem of things. So sharing is not just something that your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa have made up and think is cool. This is a big deal for these apostles and the early church. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, which was driving them to do all these kind things, we as well can latch onto it and share what we have with other people. So I want you to think about that. What can we share besides just the things that we know we need to share at home? How else can we share with the people that we come in contact with? Think about that. That'll be a challenge for next week. The projects are fun. This is, it's always fun to find the hidden objects and there's only a few of them. They show them to you right here. You find them right here. Even I could do that. On the back of this, it's talking about an organization that helps kids around the world that need food or clothing or medicine or clean water. We'll talk a little more about that on the Zoom, but when we get together for Vacation Bible School, there'll be a mission project that we will be sharing things with people that do need it. And that's the same kind of an idea. We'll, um, Jen will come up with um, a group that needs some things and she'll have a list. And just like every other year at Bible school, we'll all go out and get the stuff, bring it in, and get it to the people that need it. Kaylee's, <clears throat> Kaylee's is very tricky. Um, this one said, what organization would you create to help people? What would you start? And then how would you advertise it? This paper wants a description of it, what you would do, what you would um, want to collect for people. And then it gives you a couple of different um, ways to advertise it on Facebook, on your phone, on TV, on a billboard. Um, good luck, Kaylee. You got a lot of work there. But that's better than this side. <laughs> this side wants you to match up the word that's in a different language with the language you think it is. All the words mean share, but you can't possibly tell um which word was portuguese or dutch or finnish or whatever um so it's kind of a guessing game but i will give you a hint the answers are in the back of the book so it won't be all time lost it'll just be neat to see and try to say share in all those different languages so as usual you've got your work cut out for you not just with the projects but with the things you have to do to share the love of Jesus this week. See you soon.